Hello, everyone. Welcome. So we have some Ascension questions, um, and actually it's dimensional questions, you guys. So um, one viewer here, she asked, hi, Jen, I'm seeing this after the live. I have some Ascension questions. In the beginning of your video, you talked about using the 11th dimension to clear with intention. And we only have so many characters, you guys, in the uh, StreamYard banner. So how specifically does one use the 11th dimension? All right. So we talk about us being in the third dimension. This is about emotion. Our whole experience as human beings in the, on the planet Earth is experienced through emotion. Uh, fourth dimension, you know, we don't really want to talk about it. It's, you know, the space for fallen angels. Fifth dimension is the dimension of pain, longing, regret, pain, pain, longing, and regret. Sorry about that. So understand that the dimensions have like a physical component to them, uh, the sacred geometry, uh, a spiritual message. So um, the fifth dimension is about pain, longing, and regret. Now, what I mean by that is, I mean, it's not bad. It's just that is the motivation that we go to when we access the fifth dimension. Fifth dimension is us. Um, it's like a hologram of who we are now in the third dimension. And we will always stay that way. That's the fifth dimension. But our soul ex exists in many dimensions at one time. But that's what the fifth dimension is. When we talk about pain, longing, and regret, we're talking about your intention in accessing the fifth dimension. And it can lead to fear, lots of fear, which can evolve into attachments. That's what we're talking about. Now, the fifth dimension, it can be a beautiful thing to access because if you have a question for a crossed over loved one or, um, you know, you want resolution, you want a summation, you want some sort of closure with a soul that is crossed over, it can be such a useful thing because you can get a message that will help your soul to heal or move on or make sense of an experience. But if you keep going there, if you keep accessing that, um, you have to be mindful. You know, this is what Courtney says. Just be mindful of your motivation for going there because you can create problems um, with fear that can evolve into attachments. Does that make sense? Go ahead and email me, jennajenbushman.com if you have questions about that, I understand, or put them down in the uh, comment section. Um, but it is not a bad thing, just because we say those words, pain, longing, and regret. They're just emotions that we experience as humans. So sixth dimension is about the circle. And it's about our foundation. The soul begins to feel a foundation uh, in a more spiritual plane because we're moving to the light dimensions. Does that make sense? It's about the circle. Time is circular where we're seeing that this is the beginning of the foundation. The seventh dimension is about the square and we are building the foundation. It's kind of like you recognize the foundation in the circle. You're acknowledging that, that we are connected. But in the seventh, you begin to build that foundation. These are like the spiritual messages, you guys. So hang with me. Uh, the eighth dimension is about the triangle. It's where we start to see the intersection of universes. The soul opens up to the possibility that there is a different perception to things. It's not just that there is one answer to things. 
that you can kind of let your spirit uh, expand and see that there is possibility. That's in the seventh dimension, the intersection. Eighth dimension is again about the triangle. And um, oh, so Courtney's here. Um, I think I lost my place. <laughs> So I'll just say them really uh, quickly again. I apologize, gang. So six dimension circle. Uh, uh, <clears throat> the seventh dimension is the square building the foundation. Eighth dimension is the triangle. It's the possibility of parallel universes. Ninth dimension is about the Merkaba. Merkaba is two triangles inverted and spinning. So this is about universes, perception, reality existing in two spaces at one time. It's like occupying one space at the same time, meaning that you can choose your perception. A soul can choose its perception. Does that make sense? I hope this is making sense. Tenth dimension is the beginning of the light frequency. So the light frequency is a higher place. It doesn't mean that it's better. It doesn't mean that it's less. When I say higher, it's just different. It's light. It's not like the physical dimensions that we've experienced before. So the light frequency in the 10th dimension, it's like getting back to the circle. The circle is like where the soul realizes that you are part of. 10th dimension in the circle, in the light frequency is where time bends. And um, you see your connection to the possibility of all. It's the same as the sixth essentially, but it's in a different kind of mechanism, if that makes sense. Um, so when you ask Rebecca, how specifically does one use the 11th dimension? The 11th dimension is where intention resides. Um, it's not like you are using the 11th dimension. You are using the idea of intention, which resides in the 11th dimension. So you kind of want to flip it as a human being. Remember that you are a human. You guys, remember that. We are humans having a spiritual experience. We are also spirits having a human experience all at the same time. Merkaba stuff, right? All right. 11th dimension is about intention and that you can use your attention, your intention for ascension. And um, we need to talk about ascension. What is ascension? So that's a triggering word from folks recovering from organized religion. I get that. And they don't like that word. Um, so we call it leveling up or expansion, inclusion however you want to describe it, but it means that your soul works something out <laughs> and makes sense of something and rises. When we talk about dimensional work, so like here, Rebecca, she is, she's a star seed. She's from the 11th dimension. That was her birth dimension. And it doesn't mean that just because she's in the 11th dimension born there, that she has done the work there. It's just like a placeholder, you guys. It's because we're in the third dimension. Conceptually, we see things on a linear number line. And so we want to kind of number it as like zero is less than, you know, 11. But, or we see that zero is less than 11. And that's not, when it comes to dimensional work or soul work, Rebecca, we're all equal, guys. Um, the dimensions are equal. It's just like a placeholder. You have to start somewhere, 
but you have to do the work while you're there. And when you move through the other dimensions and do that dimensional work, then you rise, you ascend, you expand. But then we have our ascension in our lifetime. Right now, you sitting here right now watching this video, right? You are experiencing your own ascension here on earth, here in this earthly experience in the third dimension. Okay, so how do we do that? We do that through soul contracts. Rebecca, you've taken the class, right? So the whole idea of our soul contracts, that's the whole idea of us being here in the third dimension, is to work through our contracts. Why is it that we're here? What is it that brought us here? Why? How? You know, what is this teaching me about me? What is this teaching me about my relationship with spirit? Because your whole experience here as a human is through emotion. Think about it. Every interaction that you have throughout your day is through emotion, is through a relationship. Whether it be with the checker at the grocery store, somebody who cuts you off on the freeway, or with your, your life partner. Right? Think about it with your kids, with everybody in your life. It's all about emotion. So if your origins are actually from the 11th dimension, how does that figure into the equation of ascension? It just means, sweetie, that that's where you're from. Your ascension is interdependent right now in the third dimension. If you want to ascend from the third, figure out why you are here, what the contracts that are anchoring you to this lifetime when you figure that out, when you transmute that energy, but ultimately get to that answer of what is spirit trying to teach you about you? What is spirit trying to teach you about your relationship with spirit? When you really get to that answer, that that's it. That is the uh, Holy Grail. That's the key to ascension. Are you with me? Okay. Um, where'd you go? You feel that ascension is your primary goal. Excellent. That's perfect. <laughs> and not just for yourself, but for everyone else too. And yes, there is a need in our collective consciousness, you guys, to rise, to evolve, and to expand. And we have this need now because we have reached a place in space and time here on earth that it is conducive for that and there's a need for it. So yes, it's not just for you, Rebecca, it's for everyone. And everyone is feeling it, right? And it's interesting how we've all found each other here on YouTube doing this kind of work. Now, Rebecca has been dealing with circumstances in her life that has given her emotional turmoil. Well, I know, sweetie, I'm not being uh, flippant, but good. That's good. That's the whole point of being here as a human. We go through turmoil. It is a direct relationship. The greater the turmoil, the greater the growth, <laughs> right? This is how we grow. This is how we rise. This is how we expand. We overcome. All right. So your Rebecca's cousin committed suicide and that sent you on an emotional dive. I am so sorry. Even though you were not close, um, you went to her apartment and you could see the depth of her illness and suffering. All right. Let me tell you about suicide. Um, there is nothing you can do for a person who is suicidal. You can love them. Um, 
I mean, there is something you can do for folks that are suicidal. I just spent a lot of my lifetime suicidal in suicidal ideation or really just like making a plan and ready and trying to. I spent a lot of my younger years doing that when I was a teen and my 20s and then into my 30s when I was in Hawaii. Um, but um, understand that folks who are feeling this way are excellent at masking, excellent at giving and creating this illusion that they're okay, that they're fine, right? Um, and that's why it's so stunning when somebody does kill themselves, why it's, it's just stunning. They were just here two days ago and they seem so jovial and fine, but understand that that is a thing with folks who walk around, uh, feeling this way. They are excellent at masking a lot of them. Uh, I understand that. And I understand what your cousin was doing um, and could do and it, how it would send you into an emotional dive, even though you were not close, because when you went to her apartment, you could see the depth of how she suffered. You know, usually in our living space, it is a reflection of what's going on inside of us, right? If we're not clear here, the house doesn't stay organized and clean, right? It can be, um, you know, for me, when I went through my uh, times of depression, it was always reflected in my home, you could tell. Um, um, and so I understand that how shocking that that is for folks when they realize, you know, somebody that was in their sphere or they cared about, um, you just, you didn't know. And so that would be a shock to see her suffering. It left you feeling extraordinarily sad <clears throat> and lent itself to difficulties in continu continuing in your daily practice of calling in the light and sending it into Gaia. Okay. And humanity and the collective consciousness of humanity. I know how sensitive you are, Rebecca, and you being the star seed, the 11th dimensional star seed that you are, don't often feel like you belong here or that this world makes sense to you. And so this kind of thing would knock you off your rocker. And it's okay, be patient with yourself because you feel other people's experiences and how that can lend itself to um, not take care of yourself. So remember, Rebecca, there's many tools for this. Number one is understanding who you are, understanding it as a star seed self, that star seeds really have a difficult time feeling like they belong here on earth, um, have a difficult time managing emotion because it doesn't make a lot of sense, the choices that humans make. It can be very confusing. Also, the type of uh, seed that you are, you absorb other people's energy. You want to be careful about that, you know, examining, maybe journaling on where is it that you learned that it is your job to absorb other people's pain, other people's energy, other people's um experience um, just because you are spiritual and you are caring and loving it is not your job to absorb that from others so remember the six calls 
going into the shield of safety. That's what that's all about. It's creating that energetic barrier. It doesn't mean that you don't love. It just means that it keeps your energy your own and lets other people have their energy and their experience. Because remember, we all have come in with our own plan. We come in um, needing to have our own experience because we are all human beings having our own spiritual experience or we're all spirits having our own human experience. But I understand how that can knock you off your rocker. You don't feel that connection. And, you know, you kind of, you, you, you don't want to practice working with the light for a while with something like that. That makes sense. Just, it would help to understand who you are and how you respond to this kind of uh, experience or pain. Right, hon? So, needless to say, you have felt off kilter. You know that many of us starseed and the light workers are here to bring light into the collective and to lift humanity up, so to speak. Right. And you do just by being you, Rebecca. Understand that if you are a starseed, you are a light worker, it is not your job to um, take care of others. If it brings you joy to spread light to um to do light working activities then do that but what i'm saying just by you being you is light working right so don't worry don't that is a a, a very like judgmental it, i see people doing that in the spiritual community that they have to be working in spreading light. But believe me, light workers, star seeds, they just do it by being themselves. So you do that automatically, sweetie. So let yourself off the hook. Yeah. All right. But I want to get back to that question of intention that you asked um, Courtney is my guide and is here and has been you know sending me info I'm channeling her um, I I have pink and Courtney are my guides and Courtney is my she she talks to me about you know, dimensional stuff and our faraway friends, ET stuff, right? So she wants you to understand that it's not that you are using the 11th dimension, that intention is in the 11th dimension, that you, us humans, all of us humans, <clears throat> we can change our lives using intention. That is how you would use the 11th dimension. Don't worry so much about uh, using something from some certain dimension. Just understanding what it is is fine. The whole point is to use the that to understand that you can change your life with intention. That we are powerful. You know, our spirit guides aren't our parents. They aren't here to guide us every second and tell us who we are and what to do. Uh, this is about free will. You have free will. You are awake, you are aware, and you are at choice. Every moment you are at choice. You can choose how you want to feel about something. You can choose the direction you want to go to deal with something. You are always at choice. You can choose a different path to figure out 
why it is that you are here and uh, how you want to filter your reality. I hope this is making sense. Just understanding that you are powerful. Things don't happen to you. They happen for you. They happen to help you move along, to rise, to expand, to ascend, she says. So use your intention to change, change your perspective, to change your life. And you do that with soul contract work, right? Seeing, uh, seeing all your relationships as energy, seeing the relationship here with your cousin and her decision to end her life. You know, what is that? Why is it that it hurts so much? What is it that the energy is in that? What is that that's being reflected back to you? So that you can learn about you. What is it? Why did it bother you so much? Does that make sense? So I hope this makes sense, everybody. I thought this was really cool that um, she wrote this <laughs> down in the comments. And it was really thought-provoking questions, but it also helped to explain um, some of the dimensional work. Uh, dimensional work, it's big. And um, this is just like a little taste. So I hope this helped you. And thank you, Rebecca, for being so open and honest and just questing. Rebecca is a beautiful soul, you guys. So thank you so much. And I hope this helps everyone. Um, yeah. Last words from Courtney are, is she really wants you to know how powerful you are, that you can choose your life, how you perceive it, how you deal with it, how you behave, how you think about it, how you filter it. It's all you. And we do this because we have free will, because we are humans here to experience this. It's our job. It's the whole point of being here. So thank you. Thank you so much, guys. All right. <laughs> Um, and thanks, Rebecca. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day.